Good afternoon. This is a special coverage of the coronavirus crisis using the combined forces of News 5 and Signal TV's One News, Radio Cinco and One PH. The government is fast-tracking the construction of additional facilities to house COVID-19 patients as the number of infections continue to rise. We'll have Ria Fernandez to give us the latest. Ria, ano nang status ang pag-convert sa Philippine Arena bilang quarantine facility? Just inaasahang matatapos na sa Miyerkules ang pag-convert sa Philippine Arena sa Bulacan bilang isa sa mga dagdag na COVID-19 isolation facility. Isang buwan din ang inisyal na inilaan ng gobyerno para sa pagpapatayo ng mga dagdag na infrastruktura sa Philippine Arena. Bukod kasi umano sa lote ay wala pang naipatayo mga pasilidad sa paligid ng Coliseum. Pero sa tulong na rin ng private sector, naitayo agad sa loob ng mahigit isang linggo ang quarantine tent sa lugar. Mayroon itong 300 bed capacity para sa mga COVID-19 patients na asymptomatic o di kaya'y mayroon lamang mild symptoms. Ayon sa DPWH, linya ng kuryente, tubig at telecommunication na lang ang kulang base sa kanilang inspeksyon sa lugar. Sabi ng Meralco, tatrabahuhin nila ito simula ngayong araw para maabot ang target turnover ng quarantine center ngayong linggo. Just may iba pang mga kumpanya sa ilalim din ng MVP group na nagpaabot ng kanya-kanyang tulong. Ang NLEX, libre na ang toll fee nito sa mga medical worker at iba pang frontliner na nakajuti sa lugar. Samantala, yung Maligaya Development Corporation na nangangasiwa sa Philippine Arena ay binuksan din yung iba pa nilang mga asset para magsilbing barracks ng mga medical worker at pansamantalang tuluyan ng mga OFW na magpaparipatriate. Jess? All right, thank you for those updates. That was Ria Fernandez reporting to us live from Pasig. Fifteen senators signed a resolution that would allow them to conduct sessions and committee hearings via teleconference amid the COVID-19 crisis. The resolution, which is an amendment to Rule 11, Section 22 of the Rules of the Senate, states that committee hearings can be allowed through teleconference in case of force majeure or any occurrence that may prevent them from physically attending. Under Senate Resolution 372, Congress shall still continue their mandate to enact laws and authorize appropriations despite the enhanced community quarantine. Ifugao Province records its first confirmed COVID-19 case over the weekend. He is a 65-year-old patient residing in Poblacion East, Barangay Lamut. He was first admitted in Panopdopan District Hospital from April 14 to April 22 and is currently confined at the Region 2 Trauma and Medical Center in Bayumbong, Nueva Vizcaya. Barangay Lamut and surrounding barangays are now placed under lockdown. As barangay officials require its residents to comply to safety measures set by the health department. Retired Supreme Court Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio suggests that the Philippines should join forces with Vietnam and Malaysia in countering China's aggression in the disputed South China Sea. In a virtual forum, Carpio says China is currently taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic in order to conduct hostile acts in South China Sea. He insists that conducting joint patrols with the mentioned countries will show Beijing that they are united against the Middle Kingdom's so-called bullying tactics. Recall that a Chinese warship pointed its radar gun at a Philippine Navy ship patrolling South China Sea in February. The Department of Foreign Affairs has filed a diplomatic protest against China on the incident. I suggest that we join uh... Uh, conduct joint patrols with Vietnam and Malaysia because that's the only way the Chinese will understand that we are united. We have to join forces now because this will continue to escalate. And uh, it's very unfortunate that China is doing this during this pandemic. And that's the latest on the enhanced and expanded community quarantine. For more updates, follow News 5, The Philippine Star and Business World Online. I'm Jess De Los Santos. We are One News.